been waiting for some current sensors to come from Robot Shop. Let's just unpack the box and see what's inside. Here's the ACS724 current sensor from Palolu. Here's a view of the top and the bottom of the sensor. This particular sensor can handle plus or minus 5 amps. It has pretty simple connections. It just has power and ground, an output pin which outputs a voltage proportional to the current, and the two current shunt connections, which are the large circles that you see on the right hand side. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up on a breadboard and experiment with connecting it to an Arduino. Here we go. Before we do anything else, let's take a look at the specification for the current sensor and notice that it has an extremely low resistance on the primary shunt, only 1.2 milli ohms. Down here we have the circuit diagram of the hookup. It's pretty simple. They have a bypass capacitor on the power supply, which I'll add, a 1 nanofarad filter capacitor, which I'll also add, and then C load, which when I look it up is supposed to be 10 nanofarads. And then the current comes into these main terminals here. Notice also that it's a 5 volt single supply operation, and that we can use AC or DC current. In, the, in this case, I'm going to just use DC. And we're using this model right here, which is plus or minus 5 amps, and it outputs 400 millivolts per amp. Now scrolling down in the specification, we'll go to the specification for this particular model. Here it is here for the 5 amp model. And we'll notice that the zero current output voltage is VCC times 0 0.5. So with a 5 volt VCC, that means that we'll have 2.5 volts with no current or we should expect 2.5 volts with no current. And we also note down here there's some error components. So they're saying that the sensitivity may be off slightly by this percent and the voltage offset error, I guess at zero, may be off by these small amounts. So we can expect that it may not be exactly uh, 2.5 volts when we have zero current, but uh, we can adjust for that in the software. Okay, so let's uh, carry on and uh, test this out. Let's take a quick look at the circuit diagram. This is the test setup that I used. I used a 7805 to provide the 5 volts for the current sensor. So I was feeding that with about 7 volts from one power supply. And over here I had another adjustable power supply feeding into the current sensor and then down into an amp meter and down through a load. I used three 10 watt 10 ohm resistors in parallel for the load. And then over here I had the voltmeter monitoring the output from the current sensor and I also had it connected to the A0 input on the Arduino. Some capacitors for filtering and so on as discussed earlier. And then this wire here is sort of optional from the Arduino 5 volts to the 5 volts from the 7805 because the Arduino is also powered by the computer. Uh, I found that uh, with this wire in place, the sensor zero point seemed to be closer to zero. Uh, I preferred not to have this wire here just for, for safety purposes. And I found that um, the uh, the current sensor zero point drifted a little when I took that wire away. And also um, I found that the digital reading on the Arduino was um, a little bit off when I took that wire away also. But I didn't really want to have that there most of the time just in case any of the wires got crossed. I didn't want uh, higher voltage going back into my computer. Okay, so let's take a look at this on the benchtop. 
The yellow meter on the left is measuring the voltage coming out of the current sensor, and the orange meter on the right is measuring the current going through the sensor. So right now I have no current going through the sensor, and you can see that it's outputting 2.530 volts. It should actually be outputting 2.500 volts if it was perfectly accurate, but in the spec that says that this can vary, and also I'm using a separate power supply from the uh, the Arduino and the uh, sensor, and I've noticed when I use the same power supply, that 2.5 becomes more like 2.510. It's still not exactly 2.5, but I'd prefer not to connect the Arduino uh, plus supply with the uh, outside power supply just for safety reasons. So just to start, I have a really simple program running that just reads the analog reading on A0. So I have the output of the ACS724 connected to A0. And you can see here on the, on the serial monitor, I have the readings coming out. And what I see initially tells me that we're going to have a bit of an issue because you can see here reading from 519 drops. 508 and then it's over around 511 and so on and right now the ACS 724 is not connected to anything with respect to the current sensing pins uh, I don't have anything connected to it so I'm just I'm just looking at the output with it in a quiescent state so what this tells me is that we have a lot of noise and uh, that's going to be an issue and sure enough, when I put the scope probe on the sensor output, this is what I see. A lot of noise riding on top of the DC level. So this would explain why the Arduino ADC level is jumping around. So this would be a good point to also discuss the resolution of our Arduino using the built-in ADC. It's 10 bit, so that means that uh, we'll have 10 to the 24 different levels with VCC 5 volts, uh, 5 volts will be actually at 1023 and that means we're going to have approximately 5 millivolts per step and if we work that out using the millivolts coming out of the sensor we can work out that uh, we're going to have 12.5 milliamps per step so that's sort of the maximum resolution that we can achieve with this so we can expect right away looking at these numbers that we're not going to get a very accurate result reading this current sensor with the Arduino. Uh, it will matter of course at low currents but at higher currents it probably doesn't matter. Anyway let's forge on and see what we get. So what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to set this up on the bench top and measure the output from the current sensor just with the voltmeter and the current meter and because we know that this is not going to work very well with small currents I'll, I'll start with some larger currents so we'll start with half an amp and I've done the calculation here for you so you can see that with our current sensor nominally putting out 2.530 with zero current that we measured earlier in the first case with half an amp I'm reading about 2.73 volts so if I subtract uh, our zero point of 2.530 to get the increase, I'm getting around 200 millivolts. And seeing as the current sensor puts out 400 millivolts per amp, we're right on at half an amp. Now let's increase it to one amp and see what we get. So here we are at one amp, and you can see that we're getting 2.930 volts. So this is an increase of 400 millivolts from our zero point. And seeing as we have 400 millivolts per amp, we're getting exactly one amp, bang on. So let's do one more test at 1.5 amps. And you can see that the sensor is now putting out 3.130 volts, which is exactly 600 millivolts above our zero current point. And this works out to exactly 1.5 amps. So it seems that in analog mode, using voltmeters and ammeters to measure this, that the sensor is extremely accurate. So now that we've determined that our sensor is working, 
I'm going to connect it to the Arduino and we'll take a look at the ADC readings on the serial monitor. And because we know that the ADC reading is jumping around a little bit due to noise, we'll take the average of 10 readings. And I've changed the program to do that. So here's the code that I'm using to make the measurements. Notice here that I've added in this fudge factor of 5 here. So this is to compensate for the fact that the Arduino ADC seems to be reading 4 or 5 points low because of the fact that it's using its own power supply from the computer. So there seems to be a slight misalignment between the power on the Arduino board and the power on my breadboard. So that corrects for that. And then down here I'm calculating the voltage and then the current and taking uh, 10 measurements and then spitting out the measurements plus an average of the 10 measurements. Anyway, I'll provide a link to this code if you want to play with it. You can see here that the average is sort of fluctuating around zero. So right now I have the power supply supplying current to the current monitor off. So there's nothing flowing, there's no current flowing, so it should be zero, but it's actually fluctuating either side of zero. Um, this is because of noise and the inherent inaccuracy of the way that we're measuring things. I'll turn it up to um, 500 milliamps. Here we are at 500 milliamps. And yeah, again, it's pretty close to 500. It is fluctuating on either side. Let's go up to 1 amp. Here we are at 1 amp. And again, it, yeah, it's reasonably close. It's just fluctuating sort of 10 milliamps either way, maybe a little bit more. Here we are at 1.5 amps. Again, it's fluctuating around 1.5 amps. It's pretty good, not exact. Conclusion, I'd say that this current sensor is pretty accurate and would work really well with analog circuits. So if you want to use it in a power supply or a current load or something like that with feedback, say through a operational amplifier, it should work very well. But there are issues with the noise and the resolution using it with the Arduino ADC. So I don't think that you could control a power supply or something like that very well with this. At least not with the system I'm using here. Anyway, it's probably good enough for just monitoring average current in higher current circuits. Obviously, as the current gets lower, the, um, the issues are going to become more and more prevalent. So if I wanted to use this for something useful with an Arduino, it seems like I might need an external ADC, maybe 12 bits or more, I'm not sure. An experiment for the future. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe on YouTube and Instructables. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.